All right, friends and neighbors, it's Professor H back with another networking video. Now, we just finished that series on OpenFlow, and now we're going to talk about why in the world we have OpenFlow and what do we use it for. So, we're going to tackle flows and flow tables. Now, before we get nutty here, let's start slow. Let's remind ourselves about all the different kinds of tables that we have in networks today and maybe a reminder of what we use them for. So I've probably said this too many times but networks use tables to forward traffic. In fact we don't do anything unless we have a table. So that's a really important thing to remember. Now, the most popular examples that we have are host routing tables, we have router routing tables, router and host ARP tables, switch source address tables, and the tables are usually there to provide a mapping between a couple of pieces of information. So I know this, and because I know this, I'm going to use this. And a lot of times there's an interface to use, although we'll find out that's not always the case. Now our first reminder here is a host routing table. This is what you'll find on every single PC or Macintosh or Linux box that's connected to a network. They all have to figure out how they're going to forward packets or frames to get to another node on the network or another node off of the network. Now I'm not going to tear through this particular table. If you want to know a little bit more about how this table is processed, go take a look at the chapter I wrote in the Packet Guide to Routing and Switching, and that happens to be Chapter 2. Now hosts have routing tables and so do routers. So here's an example of a router routing table and you can see again that there's a network that we're going to and then an interface associated with it. In fact if you look at the host routing tables the interface is also indicated in that table. So again uh, if you want to know a little bit more about how these operate if you need a refresher just go to chapter 6 in the same book. Now one of the dumbest protocols that we have out there, or maybe I should say the simplest protocols that we have out there, is ARP. Now ARP is there for a very particular reason. The address resolution protocol gives us a mapping between IP addresses and MAC addresses. Usually what ends up happening is I have this IP address, I want to know where this MAC address is. And here's an example of a host ARP table. Now it's important to remember that any device that has an IP address I should say IP version 4 address, and is connected to the network has an ARP table. So routers have ARP tables, APs and switches that have IP addresses also have ARP tables, and here's an example. If you need to know a little bit more about how ARP works, hey, Packet Guide to Core Network Protocols Chapter 4. Uh, switches are a lot of times the, the center of our network, you know, routers are on the edge, and switches are in the middle there, sort of forwarding traffic between all of our nodes that are connected. And this is an example of a switch source address table or MAC address table. And you can see here we've got a mapping between MAC addresses and the port that they're connected to. And this is how the switch figures out what it's supposed to do with frames. Again, if you want to know a little bit more about these, Chapter 2. Okay. So that brings us to the end of the, the common tables that we have here. And I, I think that's probably maybe enough that we want to bite off, you know, for one particular, one particular little video. I will give you the following teaser, though. What we're trying to work up to is how devices actually forward traffic and then maybe how software-defined networking also forwards traffic. There's a lot more to forwarding traffic than just the tables. What we have to do is take the information that's in the tables and then parse through those tables and maybe optimize the information that we have or that we've gotten from the tables. What you're looking at right here is one entry from an open flow based flow table that was on the open vSwitch VM that was sitting in that SDN topology that I built for you all those many videos ago. So OVS was the VM that was central to that topology and this is just one flow entry. In this particular case what you're looking at is a flow table entry that's there because of ARP messaging. 
And what we're going to eventually get to is parsing through this and finding out what all these fields are for and how it got there. Well, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is talk about some flow details and maybe work through some of the changes that happened when we went from straight router table, or router routing table processing on into flow tables. Remember that the open flow captures can be found on my site. Don't forget to subscribe and like if I helped. And hey, may your packets always reach their destinations.